Chris? Chris? Do you remember us? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. See? Okay. Oh, I see. I'll just put you. a moment there. You can see. different. They, uh, well, get the haircut every two months. So it's cool just to buzz pretty much everything off and all that. So. I'm trying to think, did you have a yes, tea uh, last time? Okay. They have like a little single blade razor, so I just kind of, you know, like go past the stubble and you just kind of. Just do the best you can, huh? You just got to go with that. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm okay. How about you guys? Good. Good. Yeah. I, did, I did not expect to see this, that's for sure. Surprised. <laughs> yes. well, well, let me put some fears aside. Um, we're not here for what you might think we might be here for. Um, well, they, they, they didn't know what this is a computer room. I was like, I didn't know how to have a computer room. <laughs> Without computers. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So you remember, um, I talked to you, Tammy talked to you, Dave talked to you. We're all from Colorado. Um, and so the last time we talked to you was a different situation, right? Um, our investigation was open and your case was open. Um, that's completely different now. So your case is completely closed. Um, nothing about what we're going to talk about today is, has anything to do with an open investigation. So we're not here to get more charges on you or get any statements from you that are going to jam you up anymore. Right? That's all done. So all of our cases are closed and the court case is closed. So there's nothing that we're going to talk about today that's going to get you in any type of trouble at all. Um, and so that's how I wanted to make sure you knew that that's not why we're here. Okay. Um, but why we are here, so um, so the three of us work from three different agencies, right? Quite a bit different. Mm -hmm. um, CBI, FBI, and Frederick PD, different goals. And um, the things that happened with you kind of all brought us together. And as the months have passed on since everything happened, we just keep in touch with each other and we keep talking to each other. And we've all separately kind of said, did Chris seem unique to you? I mean, Tammy have talked about this, Dave and I have talked about this. Did Chris's situation seem different to you? And we keep having that conversation, we can't quite put our finger on it, right? Um, we think that your life leading up to all of the things that happened uh, were very interesting to us. And for me personally, I don't know if you remember, but one of the last things you told me was, hey Graham, I'm sorry that I started lying to you. Um, and that stuck with me for the last couple months. It's been ringing in my head, right? Um, I've never ever worked a case like this where someone told me that ever, um, you know. And so, as I walked away, I thought, Chris is different. Chris is a little bit unique in that regard. Um, so, in talking with Tammy and talking with Dave, um, I said, you know, what did you feel like when it all went down? When we were there, when we were talking to you guys, and we all kind of, in our own different way and in our own different wording, said it all happened a bit too quick for us, right? Um, so when we saw you last, we were talking and talking and talking um, about your family, about your parents, about everyone. And then the next thing you know, for me and Tammy and for Dave, all of a sudden some patrol officers came in and arrested you. Um, and that was far quicker than we had hoped it would happen. Um, and you understand why that happened, and we understand why that happened. But it left us with a thousand questions that we didn't get to ask. Um, and then even more importantly, I think it probably left you with a thousand things that you didn't get to talk about with us. I don't know if you feel that way or not, but, um, and so that's why we're here today. Um, we wanted to kind of talk to you a little bit more about everything, you know. Um, I think there's a lot of things that you can get to talk about. Um, and so, you know, that's why we're here. Um, and it sticks with me that to this day, there's not one person that's told me, I saw it coming. Chris was like that. I knew it. Not one person. So it's just, it's, it's interesting to me, right? Not, not one. Um, so we want to talk a little bit about that. Some of the people that we work with, uh, your family, Shanann's family, um, have said, you know, if you get to talk to Chris, would you tell him some things for me? So we have that to talk about today, and it's good. I think you'll like it. I think it will give you some closure. Um, and so really that's why we're here. Are you able to talk to us? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Right. Um, so off the bat, if you have any questions, just tell us. Okay. If there's something that you don't want to talk about, that's okay. Um, we might press you a little bit. Okay. We might say, well, do you mind if we just maybe then ask one question? Um, if something makes you uncomfortable, just tell us. Um, if you need to take any bathroom breaks, you can take bathroom breaks. 
you know, for anything like that. And we'll take bathroom breaks and water breaks ourselves too. Um, so then, is there anything about your schedule today that makes it that you can't talk to us? No, that this, there was like a pass for this and the AM and the PM. Okay. It's, um, yeah, they reserved the room the whole day, oh, okay. just in case. That's just what they do. Okay, I didn't yeah. know that was like two separate things or something. Okay. I think you have to go back for lunch to get um, counted for or something. Oh, accounted for. Yeah, I think. 11.30. Lunch at, yeah, lunch is like 11, but they're counted for 12.15. So, so in general, how is it here? It's a lot different than Colorado. Yeah. Is it? It's very like, bad. It's better, I think, because, I mean, it's, here I'm actually around other people. I mean, in Colorado, it was just like, I was segregated, and it was like pounding on the walls all night, screaming, and just, you know, just mm -hmm. talking me. from other people? Oh, really? Yeah. Like, oh, they're just telling me, like, how I should kill myself, and, like, what they're going to do to me, and just, like, all that kind of stuff. So, oh. yeah, it was, today, this, this is a lot different, because, I mean, people here don't seem to, it's not like they don't care, but it's just kind of like they, they don't take, they don't, like, judge you as soon as you walk in. Colorado it was like, they they knew why I was there, and they just, that was it. They were mm -hmm. just like, they just, if they had one second alone with me, it would have been, really? They would, yeah. She, you know, must be out then. Out of, out of, like, what kind of jail? I don't know how, what it was like in, you know, DOC there, but, you know, like, they had to lock down the jail for me to walk down the hallway. Wow. Okay, well, mm -hmm. so they had to make sure you were completely separated from anyone else. Mm -hmm. Jeez. Wow. Like I couldn't, I didn't see anybody else there. Like I was, I was still next to somebody, but like I never saw them. You just hear them. <coughs> How did they know you were? Um, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I just um, they they make phone calls in there too. Oh. Okay. And they got the newspaper in there before I got in that got in there. So yeah. I was. Uh, have you been able to talk with family? Members? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like yeah. we get a. Uh, from 6 p.m. to 7.30, that's our, 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 our my unit's time out. So we get to use the phone at that point in time. Really? Mm -hmm. And do they charge you for it? Or? Oh, it's just like, uh, it's like Securus or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how do you make money to pay for that? Um, they put uh, money on the phone. Oh. So if I call, like, if I was, like, to dial somebody's number, they'd have to have, like, a phone account set up. Oh. Uh, I'm just such restricted. And then so the who you call pays for it? Yes. Oh. Okay. You've been able to talk like family members, and parents, and all yeah, that. Yeah, my mom and dad, my sister. Okay, mm -hmm. good. Is that a good thing? That's a good thing. Good. <laughs> yeah, they, they don't hear from me. They're like, oh, "What's wrong?" What's going oh, on? <laughs> good. Yeah. And how was it with them? And so far, so good. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It was. Uh, it was hard to hear your parents at sentencing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't know if they were gonna, what they were gonna say. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And so. I really appreciate what they said. I don't know about you. I definitely it was. Uh, I didn't expect them to be there. I knew they were there on the sixth, on the sixth, but I didn't expect them to fly back, and oh. they wanted to fly back to that. So. Yeah, that meant a lot. What your mom said. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Good. Um, well, so we have a thousand questions. I'm sure you do too. Do you care if we start, or do you, have, do you have any questions for us? Go ahead. We'll okay. start. All right. So one of the things that we're battling with is. Um, and I, I should I won't make any assumptions today so are you aware that this was a national story after after a little while it was I, I, I didn't talk to my parents while I was in Colorado okay because I mean my attorney team told me all right no phone calls no letters no no nothing yeah, okay so like I made I made one phone call when I was in the segregation area there but my dad didn't thought it was like somebody like a news Oh. Somebody trying to call him. Oh, so he didn't call, answer. Yeah, so he didn't answer. But other than that, okay. I didn't talk to anybody. But from what the some of the deputies were saying, that you know, for my attorney team coming in and saying, you know, this is like they've got people from Australia, England, and all kinds of people trying to figure out what's going on. So did they send you any? Did they send you any of the letters, like fan mail or anything? Well, um, I got letters, but I couldn't keep them. Like it with me, so like I could read them like on my hour out, but it's like you know I got a bunch of just letters that had no return address and oh. stuff that was just you know not, not very good letters. Yeah. So okay. They came from a weird perspective, didn't they? From what we heard. Definitely, there was there was one person I guess from Broomfield that was like writing like four times a week trying to come visit me, and then there was just a lot of people like writing up like bleed through markers saying you know like you're a monster, you know all kinds of. Well, I don't 
We're going to talk about some hard issues today, but I don't intend to take you to a dark place today. Okay. Um, I hope that when we're done, you'll feel better. I hope it'll be therapeutic. Um, we're going to talk about, obviously, uh, what happened with your family, and so that's going to be hard to talk about. I appreciate anything you can tell me about it. Um, if you need to take time out, if you need to get a tissue, that's fine, right? Um, I think it'll be very good for you. It'll be good for us. Um, and so one of the reasons I asked about that national attention is um, we were aware that you were getting a lot of letters, um, a lot of interest, and then us personally as law enforcement, we got so many people who claim to have known you, claim to have been with you, dated you, slept with you, and 99 times out of 100, they were just crazy people, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so maybe that's a good place to start. Um, had you heard about any of that? Uh, John, well, she told me about uh, one, some dude from Wyoming. Yeah. Trent? Yeah, yeah that's that guy. That, that, that blew my mind. I was like, who the hell is this guy? And who told you about that? Uh, Attorney John Walsh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, do you mind if we talk, talk about him? <laughs> Graham and I interviewed him. <laughs> you had to? Yes. We our lives. Yes. So, Trent, in summary, Trent came in and said, um, met you online on a dating app, um, had a few, you know, uh, casual but quick sexual encounters with you. Um, and, and let me be very clear, not only are we not here to jam you up today, we're also not here to judge you. Um, and if there is anything like that, you can imagine we've heard way worse, way different, way you know. But maybe this happened. So his story was um, met online, met you, and it was a time when you were uh, experimenting with maybe you met. And so he said he met a couple times, met his friends, went to an apartment, uh, had a couple of meetings in a parking lot, and that was basically it. Any of that sound familiar? Okay. No, I never met the guy. Okay. All right. Yeah, he talked about being in a your truck with your girls, like the whole nine yards, so. <laughs> okay. I've never even been to Wyoming, let alone okay. driven up there to see someone. Yeah. Um, and so this is maybe a weird question for you. Dude. Uh, do you have any uh, gay experience? No. Okay. Any interest? No. Okay. Never had a time experimenting, wonder? No. Okay. Is it possible that he found you instead of you finding him? Uh, from what John told me, just found me on like a WhatsApp. Yeah. I don't even have that app. Okay. Never, I mean, you had my phone, so okay. you, probably, yeah, yeah. you could probably saw what app I had. But I've never even heard of the app, but okay. apparently, like, he told me, like, uh, I met him through, like, a rehab center or something. Is that what he said? No, yeah. that was another guy. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 yeah it, was, it was totally... It was, I, no so did you see a picture of him on the news or anything? Um, John showed me a picture of him. Okay. He was like, well, this guy, like, he was, John was kind of... You know, making fun like, you know, sure. I'm like, no. So you saw it and you were like, no way. Yeah, Big like, lips. Did you see the mm, his giant lips? Yeah, and just like, I have no clue. Who this guy is. And he's somewhat memorable. I mean, yeah. If you met him or talked to him or got to know him, you might remember. Um, he's he's he was kind of meek. Yeah. But also a little bit um, flamboyant. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. He, he did fake lips or not fake lips, but injections. Uh -huh. He was very into skincare and makeup. Um, and you mentioned that one of the times, just as a gift, you got them some skincare products. Mm -hmm. Does that, any of that sound familiar? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. You can imagine all the stuff we're dealing with. Okay, so that's one. Mm -hmm. uh, Trent Bowles. There was another gal that you were dealing with. Amanda McMahon. Have you ever heard that name? No. John showed me a picture of her. Oh, you did see a picture of her too? Yeah, he had, he had like. Yeah, that's the same. Yeah, uh, does, that, does that look familiar? That's the same picture you showed me on the okay. MSL one to us. I was looking, I was like, who's that? He's like, oh, you don't know her either? Yeah. I was like, no. <laughs> yeah. He said it was like a Chick-fil-A parking lot rendezvous or something. Right. And that's just not true. That's what she's claiming. No. Okay. Um, I only wanted to one Chick-fil-A in Colorado. That was the one in Broomfield on Highway 7. Okay. That was it. Okay. Um, do you feel comfortable enough today to tell us if there were other people? Yeah, it was just a goal. Okay. And that was it? Yeah. Okay. Um, as these people have come out, for the most part, we've not given their stories much credit. They're just crazy people who want attention. Um, and so, but when that does happen, it does make us think, um, you know, there may have been others. 
so Nicole was the only one. I was the only one. Was there ever like a one night stand with someone else just out of the blue and one and done? No. Okay. All right. Um, do you mind to talk a little bit more about Nicole? Sure. Okay. So walk me through it because that was one of the things we never really got to ask you about. Right. Um, we didn't we talk about it. just kind of skipped on and yeah. talked about where the girls were birthday. So what happened there? So it was probably around probably June 1st or something. That's when I first met her. And uh, it was just like a work conversation. I actually messed with the gas meters that, you know, we were out in the field. And um, I was messing up. And then you know, I took it to her, like, hey, you know, how, what's going on with this? Like, how do I fix it? And, you know, after that, you know, we just ran into each other a few times in the office. And I think it was probably the fourth time meeting. Um, she had asked me, because, like, when I, we were talking back and forth, I would say, uh, you know, like, we moved here from Colorado, or from North Carolina, stuff like that. And then uh, she was like, what's all this weed stuff you come like, oh, I took out my phone and showed her a picture. Like, you know, my girl's on the phone. I was like, oh, okay. She's like, so you know, like, yeah, like, you know, I don't wear, I didn't wear a ring at work, because like, I got some boxes to get refitted, but I lost all that weight. So, but, um. You lost so much weight that your fingers lost weight? It was literally like, I was out in the snow one time, I went like that, and my ring went off in the rocks. So I was like, I was panicking, trying to find out that I can't wear this anymore. <laughs> But, um, so after that, she left me alone for a couple of days, and she texted me outside the field. And then after that, we just kept texting back and forth, and it was just, you know, just like, you know, like she used to work in a oil rig out in North Dakota, I think. And uh, we just kind of shredding the stories back and forth about what we did and everything. And then one day, it just kind of went to a different, different level. And then I never thought I would ever go to that level. but. Yeah. She was talking about meeting up after we got back from San Diego. After, uh, yeah, we were to San Diego from the 22nd to the 26th of June, and uh, we met up after after we got after we got back. And uh, how did you guys meet up? Uh, at a park in uh, Thornton. At the, yeah, Thornton somewhere. Um, and after that, we just kept seeing each other. Pretty much the whole month of July. So I'm asking this. Um, you tell me if I'm wrong. You strike me as somewhat of a shy person. So when you guys were meeting, it was just kind of very initiatory, like flirting at first. Okay. From both sides. Yeah. Okay. It was just kind of like feeling each other out. It was kind of like yeah. I don't. I mean. Yeah. Um, and so texts and calls. More near the end of June. Okay. And what makes you remember that it's true that, that it happened? Because we called each other before I left to go to San Diego. Oh, okay. All right. Um, at first, did you think something might happen? I just thought it was just flirting. I didn't think it was actually like something that would actually yeah. happen. Yeah. Well, it's totally natural, right? I mean, everyone kind of flirts at work, right? Because um, the relationship between men and women is different. So if you're working with a girl at work, it's just kind of natural to flirt. I, yeah, I wish I was down the field more instead of the office. That was down the road. Yeah. Yeah. I've got to see it in your eyes. That's, uh, that's kind of where the path started, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, if I was like, because when I was a field, when I went from uh, like a rover to a field coordinator, like, I would spend more time in the morning time in the office trying to get everything like situated where we're going to go and everything like that. And, you know, if I was a rover, I'd be more out in the field mm -hmm. and instead of like going to the office, like, for well, more than an hour, right? And just gave me more time to run into her, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. What did she know about you? Did she know you were married first? She did. Once I showed her the pictures yeah. on the phone, yeah. on the, like you know the home screen picture. Mm -hmm. so. so was your wife in that picture, or was it just your girls? It was just my girls right there, but my wife was the like the lock screen. Oh. So she knew I was married. My kids. Okay. Are you aware that she said she didn't know you were married? What did you think about that? I figured it was like, you know, just trying to save face, trying to, you know, I uh, just trying to, and something my sister said, it was like, uh, just trying to keep things together. Yeah. Just trying to, she, she, she phrased it a different way, but just kind of like, uh, just like ground control, just trying to control everything that's going on around her, because I'm sure she got bombarded by all kinds of different sides from the media and everything, so. Have friend. you talked to her at all? No. No. I'm no. hoping she hasn't, like, you know, written me in a different alias or something. No, I'm not talking to her that way. Oh. Um, 
Uh, and are you not allowed a doctor? I, I would hope that. Okay. No one's told you that, though? No, I mean, I would I would expect, like, uh, I, I thought, like, Colorado had said, like, on a DOC list, of, if you're on, a, like, a victim list, you can't call anybody. Oh, right. But here, I'm not sure if that's the same, but I just talked to my sister, my parents, uh, some friends of my parents. Do you wish you could talk to her? Maybe once, just to... Just to get some closure? Just to say, like, hey, you know, just once. <laughs> yeah. Just to say, hey, like, I'm sorry this all happened. I'm sorry. I'm not sure, like, what happened, like, afterwards, like, what you went through. Like, if you had, like, counseling, if you're, like, you know, a different state, if you had to leave everything behind, I just wanted to let you know, I'm sorry. And that's not something I ever saw in my life happening or happening to somebody else either. Would you be all right if we told her that? That's fine. If you want us to, let's not to. And if she would want to even talk to you, then I'm not sure if you're still in contact with her. I'm sure she'd answer your phone call more than an attorney phone call that she didn't want to call answer. Yeah. Oh, so your attorney tried to call her and she wouldn't answer? Yeah. Yeah, because I remember, I remember her phone number, but uh, after that they figured out, I guess, where she lived. You know, they left a call, a business card there. And she just pretty much after like the fifth attempt, they said she said stop, stop coming around. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure she's getting bombarded like everyone else. So. Sure. Like, I just hope she can like like. I'm not. It's like normalcy for her. Not since she's on the outside, but I'm hoping it can get that way at some point. I'm not sure if she had to leave Colorado or not, but I'm sure like that would have been hard if she did. Mm-hmm. I know I had a darker was her dream job, so that's the one thing I always like asked my attorneys is like, uh, did she have to leave? Like, did she have to do anything at work? Because that was one thing. So she always told me that was her dream job. So, mm -hmm. oh really? Yeah. Where did she meet? Oh, uh, like the get, like an old company in the dark. I was like, you know, I mean, unless you're working for like BP or like kind of Phillips or something. Oh, I see what you're saying. And the dark goes like in you know, those like big leagues. Yeah. Okay. Can I ask kind of a mm -hmm. tough question? Mm -hmm. um, did you love it? I felt like it was true. Yeah. I think so too. I think it was the same for her. Okay. Um, tell us about the time you spent with her. Well, I mean, it felt like it was, you know, I think, like when you say, like, more, more like a shy guy, it's kind of like I've never, like, been pursued by anybody before. It's kind of like I was the one, you know, trying to pursue. Because, like, when me and Shanann met, it was like, you know, she was always, like, pushing me away, kind of like, you know. She was sick for a while, right? Oh, yeah, she had, yeah, she was, uh, she had just got diagnosed with lupus, and she was on, like, a bunch of different medications and stuff. And, um, it was, like, I guess I wish one of her type. And you weren't her type. I, I wasn't her type. Okay. Cause like she 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 told me like when I, when, I, when she first because we had met. She told you that. Yeah. <laughs> You're not I remember you telling me that. <laughs> yeah, it was like you know when we first met. Like it was at a movie theater. And my uh, cousin's ex-wife set us up. You were dressed like shit, weren't you? <laughs> I didn't. I, I think didn't, that's what you told me. Yeah, I didn't know like that. So she was fancy and he was in like shorts and tennis shoes or something, right? I should have known the doorman, you know, was in a suit. I was just like, this isn't good. And like, was it a theater? It was a fancy theater, right? It was in Charlotte. It was called the Epicenter. And apparently they give you like champagne and all kinds of stuff. Oh, this is a fancy date night theater. Yeah. I think he came, I think he came like he was going to a... Like I was Cinemax, like, 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 uh, like I was going to a bar, like, like an AMC, was like a theater. No, it was like like you like we just watched a normal normal movie, but like you can like drink champagne and yes. like have like you know a Jack and Coke inside the theater and just yeah. sit there and just whatever. But like uh, yeah, it's when she first saw me, she was like, I should probably just turn and talk to the bartender a little more. Like, no, I'm not like I'm not I'm not here to meet. But yeah, like it was I was like persistent trying to pursue something. I liked her, and uh, even, even like even on our first date, like I couldn't even eat anything. Really, I was just like, you know, she's so nervous. Oh, yeah, really. Yeah, I was just, she was just like, you know, chowing down. And she was like, you know, you're like a bird. I'm like, oh, that's funny. And she talked to my parents like, you know, months later. She's like, this guy just never ate. He's like, this guy eats like a trash disposal. 
trash the school. I was like, no, like, that was not around me. I was like, well, I'm just nervous. <laughs> and I was just like, I was always like shaking and everything. But um, yeah, it was, I was always pursuing her, and then just like um, finally, I just I grew on to her. But, like you know, I would always like like with her medications and stuff. I would always like she had like eight bottles of medications, so I would always get like her day and night and kind of like put them all in that little you know flip open pill box, you know, all that kind of stuff, and you know I would always you know. Be around her. I even went to her colonoscopy. And she said after that she knew that was like a, kind of a keeper. Mm -hmm. It's like you know, who goes to a colonoscopy after three months with somebody? Right. That's um, a little soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, she asked if she needed a ride. I'm like, yeah. She's like, you want to go to the colonoscopy with me? I'm like, sure. Why not? Yeah. Like I even sat with her while she drank that nasty stuff all day. Yeah. Oh. Where <laughs> <laughs> she's in the bathroom That's all a day. Good test. <laughs> That clear stuff that's not real, that doesn't really taste clear. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, it was. I mean, it felt like a great. It was a great relationship. Everything was. Everything was great. Now you're talking about with Kessinger. No, with uh, uh, Tom Malkin, yeah. and um, like in the first first year, you know, like you know, my parents never. I don't, I don't know. My mom was always kind of hesitant. Why? I was, I was the baby, I guess. I never. I never had a girlfriend in high school, so it's kind of like she never like really saw me like. Oh, interesting. So she's kind of watching her baby walk out a little bit. Yeah, because I now I turned eighteen. I graduated. I never moved back. Okay. That, that at home. So and my sister old? moved back and forth. <laughs> so how old were you when you met Shanann? I was twenty-five. I was twenty-ten. So. Okay. So no serious hmm. girlfriends before that. Not nothing more than like six months or so. Yeah, there was there was there was some girls here and there, but just nothing more than like you know. I, the last girlfriend I had before she and she was just actually got divorced. And I just should, should never did that, but it was more of like a, I was kind of like helping her get through her divorce. It seemed like mm -hmm. she went on to somebody else. I'm like, oh, nice to know. You're the rebound guy. <laughs> the rebound guy, mm. pretty much. But you know, that's how it goes. Would you say that in your relationships with women? Um, it seems to me, and you tell me if I'm wrong, it seems to me like you're attracted to maybe a more dominant personality. It seems like it, because I'm more of the, just reserved, I mean, I just kind of like go with the flow type. Yeah, and like, Stan usually made all the decisions, it seemed yeah. like, so. I get that, I'm saying, yeah, I don't know what it is. Yeah, I don't think that's right with you, but. <laughs> so, then. And I know it's hard to keep bouncing back and forth, but it, um, it, and one of the reasons we're here is we just keep telling ourselves, Chris just does not fit the mold. Chris does not. No. Like this just, it just blows us away what happened, right? And so we will do a little bit of bouncing back and forth, and that's really just to get to know you a little bit better. Because we never really got that chance to do it. Um, we're talking twice. Yeah. Met you once. Yeah. Probably like three, well, you remember three or four times probably. So then with, do you call her Nikki or Nicole? I would really call her Nikki. Okay. Uh -oh. There's so many Nikki's and Nicole's in this. Right. Yeah. 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 I got confused. So we'll call her Nikki. Okay. So then with Nikki, was it different? It just seemed like I was more in control, it seemed like. And that never happened. Like she actually like asked me like, like my opinion on a lot of things and just like what I wanted to do and just kind of like, okay. That was new, wasn't it? Very new. It's fascinating to me. And so, did it feel more like an equal partnership, or? It seemed like it. Yeah. Okay. So then, when it was date night, would you guys talk about it? Would you ask to go somewhere? Would she say, I want to go somewhere? Was it a two I, you know, the first time we went out, it was to a movie over at the Orchard, about the 144th over there. And you know, I asked her, like, hey, you want to go see this movie? And, like, like, yeah, I'm like, okay, cool. And we just we got there, it was sold out. And, you know, normally I'd probably just have, you know, just wait two hours, like, you no, know, just go home, but not. She just wanted to walk around and just talk. I'm like, okay. Oh, wow. So that was, that was different. And, you know, I think she wanted to go to the car museum, Shelby Museum in Boulder. I've never been there. And was, That's right up your alley. So oh, yeah. I was just like, that was awesome just to walk around cars for like an hour or so. And then, you know, drag race. In Vandermeer. Okay. And I haven't been to a drag race since 2008. 
that was in Charlotte. Okay. It was like a feeling drag strip over there. And it's like the NHRA, the top fuel and fun car stuff like me and my dad used to grow up and just yeah. go there like all the time. And then like uh we went to camping in uh Sand Dunes National Park mm-hmm. and I had never I I'd never been camping, I always wanted to do it. I thought it was she'd done it like countless times. I oh guess. really? Okay. So, she's at Dorsey? Yes. Okay. Yeah, she she I guess she every time like she needed to clear her head, she'd just go by herself. Just go somewhere. Oh. Yeah. You know. So she's a completely new type of uh, person in a relationship. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um what were you thinking this whole time? Like in the, I, back of your head? I, in the back of my head I was just telling myself, What are you doing? Like, you know, every time, you know, I, I open up my phone I could see pictures like of my wife and my kids and I'm just like, What am I doing? And then like every time I was with her it seemed like I didn't think. It seemed like it was like a like a blinder that was in my face. Oh. And it was like every time I look back on it, like, you know, like I have pictures of my wife and kids and myself, and like every night, you know, or every morning, every night, you know, I just you know talk to them, you know, say like, like I have like this book. Uh, I used to read for CC, and I, I remember that book, so I read that to to them like every night, and like there's some scripture and stuff that I read to them, so I just try to you know, just try to think back like I wish <laughs> this would ever happen. I was just like, I wish that blinder wasn't on my head, right in my eyes. That would have seen what was going on. Like, you know, I was having, like, everybody said, oh, you're just out, out there having fun while your kids, you know, or kids and wife are on vacation. I'm just like, no, I'm just, it wasn't like that, but it seemed like that's what it looked like when, you know, when you're going, you know, when you're going to camping, you're going to drag race, going all this other stuff that you have fun doing, but you're with somebody else. It's not your family. It just didn't seem right. You know, I was with her, it just didn't seem like I'd be able to see that anymore. Yeah. I was there at her house pretty much every night. So it was like I didn't have that time at home just to really think about mm-hmm. anything. Because literally I didn't, like I was only at home from like when I got home from work. I worked out, I ate dinner, and then I went over to her house. Like I was never, at home. I never slept in my house. Like the whole month of July. Yeah. Talking through that though, when you said you went home and then you were at her house, was that while she now was gone? Oh, okay. So you weren't even at your house. No. This all happened so quickly, didn't it? It, it was insane. Quickly. Like I didn't like. She even told me like she was never in like a normal relationship. She would never have somebody over at her house like more than like a, once or twice a week. But she felt like she wanted me over there. Yeah. She said she felt comfortable over there. Yeah. So it was just like that's what was different. Like she wanted me over there. But. I just wish that all that would just go away. I just wish I almost like I, I know it's hard to, I know it's wrong to say I wish I never met somebody, but I wish I, you know, maybe met her at work and then just kept it that way. I think if we had a time machine, mm-hmm. I don't think this would happen again. Because mm-hmm. some people, when this happens, you're like, well, if it wasn't this time, it would have been next time, or it would have been the next time. It's just wouldn't have happened with you, would it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It happened so quickly that tell me if I'm wrong. You're not the type of guy to take control sometimes when you need to. Yeah, it seems like that's just what happened. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't take control of the situation. It's just like the situation controlled me. Right, it just happened. No, I get that, man. I'm somewhat passive myself, and it's like, you know, there's situations where I'm like, well, why did I let that keep going? No. Yeah, I don't know why. It was like, it was like a roller coaster ride that I just kept punching the ticket on and just never picked it up. Yeah. Can we talk about the hardest subject? Um, so when we were talking, the last time we talked, um, the last thing we talked about was where the girls were. Mm-hmm. But we never really got to talk about that now. That's what happened. So nothing really happened that night. You know, me and Shannon, she got home like at two o'clock. And, uh, you know, I felt her get in the bed. And 
I just felt like I didn't really didn't, didn't feel like I just wanted to make sure I looked my phone at two o'clock and make sure she was okay. Like she was in there. And I could kind of feel her kind of stirring around a little bit. And, uh, she, I, I just had a feeling that she knew like what was going on. I mean, obviously, I didn't use like a, like I had her gift card, you know, that I'd gotten, and I'd used my actual credit card, and I, I kind of just felt like something. She knew what was going on, and she, uh, she started rubbing her hand on me, and we ended up having sex. But uh, uh, I guess that was more like a test. Well, I, I would have thought. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, because when we talked, uh, when I woke up next, or later on in the morning, like you know, I, I pretty much you know told her like you know I didn't think it was gonna work anymore. And she was like, "What happened? What was last night?" You know, mm -hmm. so I figured that that's what we call the test after I've gone through everything in my head. It makes sense. And she just told me, you know, like to get off of her. And she's like, I knew some, I knew there was somebody else, I knew there was somebody else, I knew there was somebody else. I, just, I couldn't bring it up, I couldn't just say, yes, there is somebody else, but then she's like, I'm never going to see the kid again, I'm never going to see them again, get off me, don't hurt me. And then, is that what she said? So I was just like, when I climbed in bed, that was pretty much like on top, pretty much like straddling her kind of deal. And, and she thought I was gonna like, you know, you know hurt her or her baby or something. So, cause, she, cause she knew that like, you know, I, something had happened. She thought I was just trying to, you know, just check out or something. So, and that's when that happened. I know it's hard, but do you mind if we talk just a tiny bit? So she comes home, uh, you know, she touches me, you guys have sex, it seems like she's doing her test, which I understand. Uh, it sounds like you do too. I'm sure like, you know, Nikki or, or so Nikki, uh, like Cole Atkinson or Cassie probably told her, you know, that's what I was thinking, right? They talked about her during that whole weekend. More than like that, that's my parents they told me there was like a, uh, going through like text messages, it's like all, like pretty much. They all kind of just told her he's with somebody else. Type of deal. Yeah, and she spent a lot of time with the gals. That's what they did probably all weekend is talk about it, give her advice. I think that's what we found, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. So she comes home. Uh, you guys have sex, and then did you fall asleep between then and what work? Yes. Okay. So then, at some point, does she wake you up, or is it you waking up for work? Not a lot more. Oh, okay. And you're gonna work out. Mm -hmm. But then that's when she started talking, wanted to talk more. And she was pretty mad. Yeah, she, I mean, it was, I, I had already kind of knew that, you know, I, using that credit card, it was kind of, it was. Was that intentional? Yeah. I had no other way to do it. Oh. I like, you know, I, I used to, because I got these anarcho gift cards from like, you know, you know, doing good stuff at work and yeah. stuff like that. And I had used them all. Oh. Was, was part of me just like, I yeah, screw it, whatever, I don't care, I'm using this card. I, I, that's, I, part of me just wants to say, Nikki, can you pay for this? But I just, I don't know. Yeah. Even I think, um, from what my attorney said, she even noticed I used a different card, like a blue card. You know, mm -hmm. Maybe she thought, you know, like I felt comfortable enough just using a normal bank account or something. But, you know, I, you know, I told her I was going to Iraq, and I told, she told you guys I was going to Iraq. Yeah. It was like, you know, it, even, I, it felt like, you know, like looking back at everything, like just like reading the scripture more and more now, I can see like, you know, God told, like gave me opportunities to get out. Like even my friend Jeremy uh, Lindstrom, he even invited me to, because like it was his daughter that came and watched the kids on Saturday, that Saturday night. And he was like, hey, you said we're going to a Rocky game. You want to go to me with the Bronco game and watch the Arizona Cardinals? Like in my mind, it was like, you know, go. Just, uh, just yeah. Just, just say, hey, I, I can't, I can't find a babysitter. Bye. <laughs> yeah. And maybe that would have been like, you know, you know, like a light switch in my head goes off, light switch in her head goes off, maybe it just like goes different directions. That was kind of like my last, like, opportunity to kind of get out, it seems like. Cause, uh, I wish I would have said, yeah, let's go. <laughs> yeah. And I think that would have just put me on a different trajectory. So then, Shanann 
Did she actually say you're never going to see the kids again? She said that to me before. Yeah. That never hard to hear. Yeah, because she said to me before she went to Arizona. She said, like, I wasn't really sleeping in the bedroom. I was sleeping on the couch or in the basement bed or something. And, like, she had slammed the door. You're never going to see the kids again. So, yeah. Did she get fired? Yeah. Only once in our entire relationship I've ever seen her left that way. Yeah. And that was the a time before, or was that on the night that it happened? No, it was uh, right back in North Carolina. Oh. It was one, it was just like one of those, it was, it was just a fiery argument that yeah. I never, like, I never raised my voice to her or anything, and like, you know, I like, I just got mad, and I slammed the door, and she's like, ow. I'm like, I should have slammed the door. Is that when you were in North Carolina that last week? No, it was like previous to that. This is like 2010, 2011. Oh. It was like early, early, early. Okay. In her old house. Before kids? Yes. Were you dating? Were you married at that point? Dating. Oh. Yeah, it was just like, I, I, I don't remember what it was about. I think some I think some girl maybe texted me like from my past or something. And like, I was just like, this. And, and she was like, 